Garmin has added a new budget-friendly AMOLED display equipped watch to its Forerunner range. This is the Forerunner 165 which costs around $250 in the US or £250 in the UK. Now technically this particular model is the music version which costs about $50 or £40 more but either way it's cheaper than the Forerunner 265 versions and more expensive than the entry-level Forerunner 55. And for the money, it's actually brilliant. Sure, it misses some of the features from the 265 and the other more expensive models like the Epix or the Phoenix, but if you're after a really good running and fitness watch and don't want to spend lots and lots of money, it's got a really good balance of features and performance. I'm Cam Bunsen from Pocketlint, and this is my review. Like all the other Forerunner models, the 165 is designed to be a lightweight, sporty watch. So its material choices are all picked with comfort in mind. When you're running or working out, it can be distracting to have an uncomfortable and heavy, chunky watch. So this is very stripped back, built from lightweight materials and very easy to wear all day and all night. And you barely notice it's there at all during an activity. Its lightness is complemented by its sleek profile, so it's very easy to ignore. And it's one of the few watches I can wear all night, every night, to track my sleep without really being aware of it. Now, one way Garmin cut down on costs was to use a hardened glass rather than a more durable sapphire or gorilla glass. So anyone who finds themselves out bouldering or banging their watch against random objects, rocks or anything, may want to look at a more premium and durable model. Still, it's water resistant at high levels and rated up to 5 atmospheres or 50 meters. Now one of the things I love about the 165, like the Epix and the Phoenix models, is that you can control the entire interface using the physical buttons dotted around the case. Yes, it has a touch screen you can tap and swipe on too, but there's something that feels a bit more natural and intuitive about using a button system. You get that instant feedback from the click of the button that you've actioned something. Not to mention the fact that when you're running it's much easier to press buttons you can feel than trying to precisely tap or swipe your finger on a display. Garmin knows this is a preference in exercise too and knows that often having a touchscreen as the primary control method can be problematic in different workouts if the display isn't locked. I don't know how many times I've accidentally swiped away from screens or paused workouts with other watches and so when you start a workout the touchscreen is disabled by default. You can switch this setting off if you really want to though. Plus the bezel around the watch display actually has labels on it like a classic sports watch telling you the core function of those buttons so it's really easy to pick up. And really easy to start an activity, just click the start button, choose your workout and press it again to start. Now, slowly but surely Garmin is transitioning away from its old transflective memory and pixel displays. They had their benefits mostly around battery life. They can display time and information without using much battery at all. In fact, with the backlight off and no moving animation, it doesn't use any. Instead, using the ambient light around you reflecting on the display. But now that AMOLED displays have become a lot more battery efficient and are brighter, more detailed and more colour rich, there's really no competition. You can't have the display on all the time without significantly decreasing your battery life, but when it is on, it's far easier to read and more colourful and has smoother animations. Customers prefer it, so Garmin has been rolling it out across virtually all ranges of its watches. And because it's AMOLED, however, it uses a lot more battery juice to display any data, so by default, the display is set to only come on when you raise your wrist to look at the watch, like most modern smartwatches. Now, you can have it display always on, with a low energy always on function, but this cuts battery life down from about 11 days to just 4, and it isn't worth it in my opinion. The lift to wake function works well, so whenever I need to see the time, I just raise my arm and the screen lights up. Now being a running watch, first and foremost, the software experience is geared towards runners. So when you first press the activity button, the first three preloaded activities to choose from are the outdoor run, track run and treadmill run. However, it's a Garmin watch, and so it comes with a lot more activities you can add to that short list. Just like the other models, you can add things like walking, hiking, strength, cardio, yoga, and a whole lot more. The glance widgets continue to be a useful way to get snippets of relevant information without having to do lots of swiping across the screen. You can glance at the weather, calendar events, your body battery status, your last workout, and much more. And you can organize them to your liking, removing what you don't need, adding what you want, and reordering them. Lifestyle features are a little limited compared to the Apple Watch or the Wear OS watches, but you can add your own offline music if you're a Spotify, Amazon or Deezer subscriber. Plus, Garmin Pay lets you use contactless payments on your wrist as long as you're with one of the few banks that actually supports Garmin's protocol. You get smartphone notifications as standard, but not as much interactivity for applying unless you're using it with an Android phone. And also, if you're an Android user, you also get a few images from notifications on your wrist where Apple users don't get that option. 
Now moving on to talk about the fitness and the health, which is the main strength of any Garmin watch. And it shows its strength yet again with the Forerunner 165 and shows why it's so highly rated with consumers. It's worth noting here that it is missing some of the features the more expensive models have. For instance, there's no training readiness, training load or multi-band GPS. The Forerunner 265 has all of these and more, but then again, that model costs quite a lot more. It does, however, have all the most crucial tracking abilities and displays them in useful ways. I really like body battery, which can tell you how much juice you've got left in the tank based on your activity and your sleep and recovery. You can also make use of the training suggestions, which uses your current fitness levels, your activity, your recovery status to suggest a run to go on today. In fact, you can launch right into that from the run workout screen. And despite the fact that it hasn't got multi-band support, the GPS tracking is actually pretty accurate. I don't live in a very urban area, so can't test surrounded by lots of tall buildings, but it did a good job of tracking the routes I was taking under tree cover, reliably sticking to roads and paths and rarely cutting corners or sticking me on the wrong side of the road. Similarly, the heart rate sensor has been accurate enough, even with doing kettlebell workouts, which can be a bit of a struggle for a lot of wearables due to the way your arms and wrists move during those types of workout. I have no complaints at all. You might get more responsive tracking and more precision in GPS performance in more expensive watches, but this has generally been very reliable and consistent the whole time that I've tested it. I also like how Garmin contextualizes the data and updates the sleep coach, the recovery and the body battery based on how much activity I've done and how strenuous it was. At the end of the day, it flashes a notification on screen saying if you've had an easy day or an active day and then giving you suggestions for rest or activity. On an easy day, it might suggest ending the day with yoga or meditation, and after an active day, it might just suggest getting more sleep than usual. Similarly, if you've had a bad night of sleep, the sleep coach data on the watch's widgets will update to add the suggestion that you should get more sleep. I really like how Garmin ties all of this together and displays it in ways that are relevant and relatable. It's not just data for data's sake, it uses that data to tell you how long you need for recovery and what run to do next or how much sleep to get. Now, I've briefly hinted at battery life already, but it is one reason to pick a Garmin watch over the likes of an Apple, Samsung or Pixel watch. By Garmin standards, the 11 day battery isn't quite up to the best of them, but it does mean you can comfortably get through a full week of wearing it tracking regular activities and wearing it all night for sleep tracking before needing to plug it into its proprietary cable for charging. Now this charging cable continues to be a bit of an annoyance in my view. It's barely changed in years and I've often found the connection to be a bit fiddly. What's more, it means if you do need to charge it, you can't just use a universal wireless charger or any other cable except the one that comes with the watch. And it's pretty small, short, and because it doesn't get used all that frequently, is easily lost. If Garmin switched to a universal magnetic system at some point, I'd be delighted, but I'm happy to put up with this fiddly annoying cable if it means getting access to the long battery life and the health features on offer from Garmin. Battery life is similarly strong when using it for GPS activities too. I wasn't able to test it to its full extent because it can go up to 19 hours using GPS to track an individual activity. However, it was capable of handling a four hour walk quite comfortably. And I had no real worries about it going completely empty, even though that activity started at 30% battery. By the end of that four hours, with all navigation systems enabled, which uses more battery than just GPS only, I finished with around 10% left. Now in the end, it's hard to come away from testing the mid-range Forerunner anything but impressed. For the money, you get a long-lasting, waterproof watch with lots of great fitness and lifestyle features, plus accurate heart rate data and location data in a package that's super lightweight and slim. It's missing some of the more high-end fitness and training features and capabilities, but it's got a lot of the other core stuff absolutely right. And the AMOLED screen really does pop. Let me know what you think of this in the comments down below, or you can get me on threads. I'm at Cam Bunton. If you did like this video, please do leave a thumbs up, subscribe, and tap the notification bell, and I'll see you again in the next one. Bye for now.